What's up, everybody? Welcome to another brand new episode of Top Thunder. Here from the Top 10, I'm John Roca. And I am Matt Nost. And this is a show that we do for our patrons over at patreon.com forward slash the top 10 with the number 10. And if you'd like to uh, participate in this, head over there and you can rifle in questions at the email address that we have provided for this show. Yeah. And how's it work, John? Uh, here, I think you just said it. People send in the questions, thoughts, and comments. We read them here raw, and we uh, talk about them here on the show. So uh, I think you start us off here with Nicholas Baldwin. I do. This is Nicholas Baldwin. So Okay, so I'm guessing with uh, this. All right. It says, hey, fellas, thanks as always for answering this and previous questions, as well as for all the great content. As an organizational psychologist, one of the things I study is work-like life conflict. I was listening to another podcast about that topic right after Topic Thunder, and it made me uh, want to ask this question. Is there a specific incident or job overall that you can recount interfering with your home life? Time at work keeps you from doing what you want with friends, stress at work being taken out on a partner, things like that. What was the situation? What were the consequences? And how did you move past them? Stay safe. Stay well. All the best. P.S. Roca, if you're serious about, okay, you can read that P.S. Okay. Yourself. Okay. Um, Sounds good. So have you had a work-life conflict where basically you're, something happened at work that bled over into your regular life? I mean, sure, through the years, I've brought work mentally home with me. Yeah, I mean, sure. I mean, towards the tail end of my time recently at Collider, I was just a, a fucking depressed, angry bastard for a majority of the last few months I was there because I was just so completely unsatisfied with what the channel was doing and where they were going and how they were keeping me from moving forward and advancing as much as I wanted to and uh, were choosing to go in other directions. And it was goddamn frustrating. So when I came home... I was like just down on myself because I'm like, this is what's the point? Like I, I put my hands in or my career in the hands of people who don't uh, believe in me or don't see a future with me. So, um, yeah, I would come home and Lindley would have to kind of deal with that and, and have conversations with me about it. And yeah, I, I've had a, I had a couple of moments where I would explode from the frustration of it all and uh, not at her, just explode. And she'd have to deal with that, you know, and and um uh, yeah. So yeah. I mean, I'm sure. And and in the in time has passed. I'm sure, in shittier jobs that weren't me pursuing what I really wanted to do with my life. I'm sure I brought that shit home because you're just like, what the fuck am I doing with my life working a shit job like this? So sure, I've had it. Um, but doing this, although I have moments where you know, I'm kind of frustrated or I kind of beat up, beat myself up that I didn't do a video on this or a video on that. For the most part, I rarely take anything out on on Lindley. So I'm much happier doing this, even though it's uh, not as, um, how can I say this? I'm, I'm not seen in the same light o overall uh, as I was when I was at Collider. It's still much more satisfying and way less um, uh, difficult to balance the work-life balance here. Plus she works, you know, in the living room. So she does her job there. So we see each other more. So there's mm -hmm. much more relaxing interaction and much more fun to be had between us. I think we keep each other sane because we're able to take quick breaks in the kitchen or wherever and have some fun, you know, in between her zoom calls and my stuff, we balance each other out in that way. So it's much more satisfying this way. What about you? Um, I mean, it's kind of impossible if you're having a bad day somewhere else, to yeah. not for that bad day, not to carry over. Right. Have I ever blown up in my wife or something like that because of something happened elsewhere? No. Because mm. um, I can compartmentalize mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that. I can still have, like, I might be short with her or something, right. but I'm not going to yell at her because I'm frustrated somewhere else. Right. I can handle my emotions in that regard. Um, and there's also, you know, she knows I'm pretty good about addressing where the problem is coming from and in uh -huh. mentally dealing with it and then moving past it. But yeah. she also knows to just give me a little bit of space. Yeah. Till you figure and, it out. Yeah. Till I figure it out. But I'm usually, I'm pretty quick to get through it by comparison yeah. because 
by her own assessment, she hangs on to that shit longer. So mm. I have to give her her space longer, which is fine. Yeah. You just yeah. know that and be like, listen, this has nothing to do with me. Is it everything to do with something yeah. else? And yeah. if you happen to blow up at me, I realize that fact. Yeah. yeah. And ultimately, if it happens on either end, we immediately apologize once cooler heads have prevailed. That's good. That's healthy. Yeah. Man. yeah. yeah. Just be like, I'm I sorry. I was upset about this and yeah. I took it out on you. Uh, but blow up. Uh, no, but I think it's impossible that if you're having frustration in something in one regard, that it doesn't carry with you. Yeah. yeah. Uh, but yeah, thankfully, you know, we're both mature and adult enough to where <laughs> you, I, I, I've seen other relationships where they thrive on fighting. Oh yeah. And yeah. I don't understand that. That doesn't make sense to me why you would put yourself in that type of situation, but I guess it's just a, maybe that's what they grew up with. Um, yeah, it's weird. You know, it's weird. I, I've been in those relationships. I mean, before, before my therapy, you know, I'd have relationships where, with with certain girlfriends where we were either fighting or fucking. There was no middle ground. You know, there was either just like, you know, we we could watch a show or whatever, but then it would eventually lead to sex or it would lead to a fight, and it was just the worst. And that's all about you not knowing what you want or not having enough self confidence or self esteem, and you just kind of and like you said, just you you're used to you think that's what constitutes a healthy relationship yeah. because that's all you've known. So you have no concept of what it's like to not have something like that. And yeah, so, if they're not yeah. willing to fight then they don't really care. Yeah. Right. right. Exactly. And you almost I want mean, to, yeah. And if you're that fucked up, you're almost testing it by saying the thing that's going to cause the fight or they mm -hmm. say the thing that causes the fight. So it's a constant cycle and there's no way out of that unless somebody finally goes, I don't want to date you anymore or I need to get better to get at, to, you know, to kind of figure out what's going on here. Yeah, the last relationship I was in that was relationship might be a stretch. We, <laughs> I mean, it lasted like a month, oh, six okay. weeks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like relationship seems strong, but she, I lived here and she lived in San Diego. I met her at a show. Yeah. So I was driving down there because she would not oh. drive up here to see me. Oh. And I drove down there once and it was her birthday. And mm. I told her beforehand, I was like, look, I'm expecting a call. If it comes, during your birthday, I have to take it. Right. I have no choice in the you matter. Let her know ahead of time. Yeah. Let her know ahead of time. We're out with all her friends. And I got the call and I told her, I was like, here's that phone call. I'm sorry. And I ducked outside and I was on the phone for like 10 minutes. But it was about a string of upcoming shows yep. that were very lucrative for me. And I had to take the call because we had to basically figure out some logistics of. Right. Of course. But in essence, I was paying my rent for most of the year by taking these gigs. Wow. Yeah. And I was like, I have to take this call. And her friends sat inside and said, what kind of bullshit is this? <laughs> and were they had just been nice to me and I walked yeah. back in and now she's doing the same thing. And when they all left and we were just the two of us later that night, yeah. I got it both barrels. And I'm like, wow. we had a discussion yeah. beforehand. This was, you know, worth quite a bit of money to me. If it's really good, it lasted like another week after that. I was like, I can't deal with this. I'm driving down to see you. Right all the time and you won't make the effort to come up to see me. And then there, there was just, it was too much. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, and clearly she had toxic friends who were, you know, pushing that ridiculous narrative yeah. as, opposed, as opposed to being understanding. They were more like judgmental. And that's another thing too. I mean, that, that foster, that leads to bad relationships as well. If you're surrounded by friends who, how can I say it? Cater to your more toxic instincts or cater to more to, you know, making it seem as if the other person is at fault. And you got to be aware of all that. You know, I tweeted about this yesterday, um, you know, because I don't know when this is going to drop when we record these, but I tweeted yesterday, like I heard about something and I was just like, yeah, you know, you guys got to be aware of things. If you keep lying down with the dogs and waking up with fleas, at some point you got to stop blaming the dogs. It's you if you keep doing it. So walk away from the toxic shit. Get away from that toxic shit because it eventually consumes you and uses you up and moves on to the next thing it's going to use up. And that's a dangerous thing. So, yeah. and a lot of people don't recognize that. And I certainly didn't recognize it for many years in my life, how I was constantly putting myself in toxic situations, whether it was with a friend or a girlfriend or someone I was dating or a boss or anything. If you're constantly in a state of feeling uh, unsatisfied in the relationship or not feeling like you're uh, an equal in a relationship, no matter what it is, then it can turn into a toxic relationship if that person's not aware 
of the difference in status in the situation. And so, yeah, you got to get out of it, you know, and if people cater to the more toxic areas of you, like, that's what's so great about Lynn. Like when I have the instinct to go petty or to go do something, she's just like, what is it going to get you? Why? It serves no purpose. Be bigger than that. And it's great to have someone who sees it in a bigger picture type approach, you know? So, yeah. Um, anyway, should we move on to the next one? Uh, yeah, thank you, uh, Nicholas. That was Closer Through Science Part 5. Thank so, you, Nicholas. Uh, you wanna... jump to, jump to yeah, Charles? Yeah. Okay, let's jump to Charles uh, here. Uh, we always love getting uh, emails from Charles. He says, hello, Matt and John. I am following in the footsteps of Andrew and sending you a tournament of directors. Oh, shit, to match up against. I'm putting the Coen brothers against Quentin Tarantino. <laughs> Both their movies are filled with eccentric characters often dealing with crimes and or criminals, have unique tones, and usually some pretty fantastic humor amongst all the drama. I'm only counting films the Coen brothers have, di- have directed together, so that, that means Macbeth is out. Yeah. Uh, of note, I've seen every Tarantino-directed film. I do have some notable holes in my Coen brothers' belt, including Miller's Crossing, Barton Fink, and Inside Lewin Davis, even though I hear mostly bad things about the latter. I'll be interested to see which of these films come out on top of their respective regions and which one ultimately prevails. So on the Coen brothers side of things, he has no country for old men versus the ballad of Buster Scruggs, old brother, where art thou versus hail Caesar Fargo versus true grit raising Arizona versus the big Lebowski. And then on the Tarantino side of things is Pulp Fiction versus once upon a time in Hollywood reservoir dogs versus kill bill, Jackie Brown versus kill bill volume. One. Oh, sorry. Reservoir dogs versus kill bill volume two. Jackie Brown versus Kill Bill Volume 1, and Django Unchained versus Inglorious Bastards. Um, all right, so I think I have to write this uh, down. So, Matt, as you look at this list here, uh, what's your thoughts on it? Well, uh, like the last time, I questioned the rankings <laughs> on some of these. Yes, because he, he has Coen Brothers. Number one is No Country for Old Men, and Pulp Fiction for Tarantino is number one. For it's him. not even that. It's like Jackie Brown is third. It yeah. gets the, the three seed on Tarantino. I can understand Pulp and Reservoir, and then Django is four. Yeah. Uh, most people like Inglorious much more than I do. That's five. Yeah. And the, the yeah, I'm not uh, as big a fan of, of the Kill Bill Volume One and Two, but that is mm. six seven. I would imagine that would up in arms. Yeah. Most people would be. I agree. Uh, and I don't know why it just turned into a weird version of Yoda right there. <laughs> Um, all right. Well, he's got number one, no country versus eight ballad of Buster Scruggs. Yeah, it's come on, it's a no brainer for both of us, is I it agree. not? I agree. Uh, no country easily makes it onto the next round. Okay, NCM got it. Okay, uh, then his two versus seven is Oh Brother versus Hail Caesar. I think that's another yep. no brainer for the both of us. Oh Brother okay. moves on. So good. Okay, uh, his three six is interesting. Fargo True Grit. Yeah. That's a tough one. Well, these, these next two are tough. Yeah, these next two are tough. Mm. Uh, I mean, I'm going to put True Grit on more than I'll put Fargo on. I so I have to say the exact same thing. Yeah, okay. True At Grit this is. point. I've watched Fargo a lot of times, but now the uncomfortableness, I don't want to revisit as much in Fargo. Fair enough. The first, uh, so that's the first upset of the tournament there. Number six over number three, Fargo. Yeah. Number six, True Grid over number three. All right, so then we have the number number four, Raising Arizona versus number five, Big Lebowski. Now, is this our first departure? Because I love Raising Arizona, but the Lebowski wins yeah. this in a landslide for me. For you. Okay, so I will give you MK the L. Okay. All right. Um, all right, let's move on to Tarantino. And we'll swing back around in the second round here. Pulp Fiction, number one versus Once Upon a Time in a Hollywood, number eight seed. God, I loved Once Upon a Time. <laughs> this is a tough decision. I really loved it. It's my favorite of his in a wow. long time. This works out for you if Once Upon a Time in Hollywood was number three and Jackie Brown was number eight. This is an easy win. For oh, you. yeah. Yeah. I, I just go chalk one through yeah. four. Yeah. Done. Yeah. And that this whole Jackie Brown at three to me is throwing everything uh, yeah i'm gonna go pulp but that's okay. a fucking brutal one eight yeah i'll go pulp as well um okay and reservoir dogs versus kill bill volume two. Oh man it's easy for me i'll take reservoir dogs yeah i'll have to take reservoir on that one even though i do because i do think two is the weaker of the two installments in my opinion 
Uh, Jackie Brown versus Kill Bill. This is the first upset. Yet again, a six over a three seed. I take Kill Bill. What do you take, Jackie Brown? I think I might take Jackie Brown. Damn, dude. I'm, I don't like the Kill Bills. They're they're good, but okay. All right, Django Unchained versus Inglorious. Oof. I take I Django. To, yeah, I have to go Django as well. Yeah, that one to me is an easy. Okay, so on Matt, so Matt, going up back up to Cohen's, we have the number one seed. So we'd have to put No Country for Old Man versus True Grit. I would imagine, right? That's the six. Well, that's the three six. So it would be hmm. one eight takes on the winner of four five. Oh, one, okay. So the four five is raising Arizona. So no country for old man versus raising Arizona. And, for you, uh, for and me, Lebowski for me, and Lebowski for you. Um, I I'm taking Lebowski. Ew, you were taking Lebowski over no country. Yep. Fucking hell, man! Massive upset here in the Matt Nost uh, bracket here. Not for Matt Nost. Uh, <laughs> Massive upset to John Rogan. Look, I, I think that's a. I wouldn't have had Lebowski as the four or five. Yeah, that's fair. Yeah, we're should, dealing with what they he's given us. We have to. Play I, I realize. I'm just saying. Out. Uh, it would be in a top two situation. All right, fair enough. Maybe so that's then, part of his orchestration here. Maybe is to force these uncomfortable. But I'm taking Lebowski. All right, old brother versus uh, true great. Or uh, yeah, old brother versus true great. Taking old brother. <sighs> Yeah, I have to take Old Brother. All right, so Old Brother wins, and No Country for Old Men beats Arizona for me. Yeah, and if it was those two, and I'd take an Arizona, like if okay. Lebowski wasn't in this matchup, I would take yeah. No Country over Arizona. All right, so then Old Brother versus Lebowski for me, it's Lebowski. Wow, and for you, it's No Country. It is actually No Country over Old Brother. All right, there we go. That's settled. All right, in our number, in our other uh, setup here, the one A taking on the four five, Pulp Fiction taking on Django Unchained. Uh, I take Pulp. Okay, yeah, I'll take Pulp. And then Reservoir Dogs uh, versus for Matt knows Jackie Brown, and for me, Kill Bill Volume One. Uh, I'm taking Reservoir Dogs. Okay. Are you taking Volume One? I am taking Volume One. KB. So then it's Pulp Fiction versus Reservoir Dogs and Pulp Fiction versus uh, Kill Bill Volume 1. Uh, and I, I am taking Reservoir Dogs. Wow. And I am taking Kill Bill over Pulp Fiction in a not even a question. Not even a question. <sighs> wow. We got here, but it was uh, it was brutal, man. Yeah, I'd like to talk to the Associated Press to see about these rankings. <laughs> I'd like to get the vote totals from the journalists because uh, these matchups were tough. <laughs> these matchups were tough. Charles, are we assuming by your number ones they just automatically default to that would be your winner? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, I would assume so. But yeah, that's pretty brutal. It's a good one. Uh, it's a good. Set up, but I agree with Matt. There were some incidences or in, in, in situations with how you rank things. I wouldn't be 100% uh, uh, down with how you rank the threes. So uh, <laughs> there we go. Um, all right. Uh, good stuff, Charles. Thank you very much. Um, let's see. Where are we at right now, time wise? Uh, do you want to do time another? For one more? Yeah. yeah. All right. Go ahead, brother. Thank you, Charles. Great question. Yeah. Uh, this comes from Fred Castillo, and he says, Hello, John and Matt. It's a blast listening to you guys talk about different topics. It's always informative and funny. Here's my question. Over the past 20 years in movies, mm. what has been your biggest head-scratching result, whether it be popularity or box office? For me, it was Disney's The Lion King. It totally missed, in my opinion, but did $1.6 at the box office, which had me bewildered AF. <laughs> Thanks for all the hard work you do and for reading my email. Have a great day. Fred Castillo. Oof. I, I got my answer. Easy, Go ahead, easy. please. Go ahead. Go the for fact it. that the Fast and the Furious <laughs> is going to have 10 fucking movies. 10. Mm -hmm. Makes no sense. This was a paper thin premise sure. that they deviated from. If you go back now and watch the first one, yeah. I can't believe where we're at now. Yeah, it's, no, he's a superhero now. It's oh, 
they're beyond superheroes. They could lasso fucking helicopters if you yeah, watch Hobbs true, and Shaw. True. The offsuit. True. true. It's utterly unfathomable that people can just check out that much and enjoy yeah. it. It'd be one thing if I respected the actors involved as well. Mm. But by and large, the cast, I think, been proven out to be pretty mediocre in their other projects. Uh, or they have one note. Okay. Michelle Rodriguez, I'm looking yeah. at you. Yeah, yeah. Um, that like they keep adding. So now you got what Charlize, and you've got yeah, Helen Mirren, Helen Mirren, and the they brought the Rock in, and Jason Statham, and other individuals who have a slightly more varied career. But the the core of individuals, you are technically in, arguably one of the most successful franchises, and yet you guys don't get work anywhere else. Don't you think that's kind of telling? Yeah. I mean, Tyrese, Ludacris, Vin, Michelle. Ludacris. You guys don't work anywhere else. That's true. I just, yeah. it is baffling to me. And then it just, it's guaranteed the next one's going to do seven bajillion dollars and just oh, like, yeah. hey, little brother, how much money is it going to take for you to come back for 11? <laughs> See, I'm out. I, I already liked and respected The Rock. Yeah. But him turning that shit down just amped it up to an, an even higher level. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, Fast and Furious, it is... I don't fucking understand. I don't like, know. I'm not denigrating you enjoying it. You have fun. Oh, yeah, oh, but I know what it is. See, this is, this is the difference with how I approach... you know, Versus how I see other people approach things. Like, I know what the fuck those Fast and Furious movies are. People get so irritated by them, and I'm just like... They're stupid fun. That's what they are. Just like those Transformers movies. They're stupid fun. And for what they are, they do a good job for what they are. You know, and people want to compare move like, you know, this kind of shit to like Citizen Kane or to Godfather. It's like, you can't compare those two. They're two completely different approaches to filmmaking. You know, they what they're trying to do, Godfather, they're not trying to do with Fast and Furious. It wouldn't make sense. So for what they do they do a good job um are these movies ultimately going to be revered as great well-written incredibly choreographed films in terms of the emotional beats and the scripts and where you're taking the arc of the characters fuck no but they're fun to watch because of the chemistry with all the actors um and, you know just saying, transformers that's just f stupid fun you know so i i understand people get so but upset at least this. with transformers i still believe they could make a good movie of course, it's there. Like, look at Bumblebee. Yeah. There's a good movie. Oh, that is a good movie. Didn't make a lot of money, but it certainly it was did. a good movie. Whereas Fast and the Furious, it's like I don't, I don't understand. Yeah, how you can like I, I am all for hey, look, it's a stupid summer movie. <laughs> Let's just go watch stuff blow up. Right. I'm happy with that, but just the idea that there's those don't get to have nine, ten, eleven. <laughs> Hey, we're going to blow up more stuff and now we're going to the fucking moon. Like, yeah. what? Yeah. How do people keep tuning in for this shit? Uh, yeah. yeah, it's just baffling to me the runaway success of that series. I think for me, it's, you know, I can understand franchises and what have you. To me, it's Alice in Wonderland. Like, I don't get why people went to see that movie at the levels that they went to see that movie and the sequel as well. Like, just perplexing to me on so many levels. Like, I don't get why people... <clears throat> you know what? Here's a controversial one. Let's be more honest. Aquaman. I don't know how Aquaman made a billion dollars. That film is so terrible from top to bottom. The script, the performances, the logic that you have in the film. You know what? Mira can do everything Arthur can do, but because the prophecy said it's supposed to be this dude, we can't let her be queen and run shit. And it's like what it's just so stupid and then you have a sequence where he's like hey hey how do we get this uh thing out of the uh how do we get this artifact to show us what it's got we got to drop water on it what if i pee on it ain't that funny i'll pee on it like it's that kind of stupid shit that i'm like what's that doing in a film about a guy who's going to be a king of 70 percent of the earth like it's just kind of dumb <laughs> You were just and defending I, Transformers, and they've got their yes, own. But I know what Transformers is all about. Aquaman is James Wan. It is trying to be 
something more. It was trying to rev- it's trying to have that kind of status as a as a great superhero movie. Whereas Fast and the Furious is just fun throwaway stuff. And look, I think James Wan is has I don't know if he's produced or been involved in Fast and Furious. I don't know if I'm getting confused there, but like yeah, but this is something completely different. And so I you know to me I just was like because he's done this these horror that are a little more elevated than what you've seen in the past and and i just thought this is was a terrible um approach especially for a character that is supposed to be so he was trying to change from being made fun of you know and i just didn't like it and i i don't know how it made a billion dollars of all the films they released i have no concept of how i know how it made a billion dollars how just in the same way that uh snyder's zombie film made the oscars DC fanboys are second to none. Yeah, true. It's impressive. Well, not just fanboys, fangirls too. There are some hardcore DC fangirls out there online as well. So, yeah. I'm not denying that, but yeah. I, I would venture to guess that 90% of Maybe. the most vocal Maybe. are men. Sure. Uh, Although if you've ever been to a sports, uh, yeah, a sports event in person, Women can say some of the most brutal out of out of bound shit when they're yelling at mm-hmm. uh, at the rival players. So they may not be ninety percent, but their ten percent is pretty brutal. So just throwing that out there. Well, you know, if society does keep trending towards we're all equals, then they'll they'll fall under the same rule that we do: yeah. talk shit, get hit. <laughs> I don't know about that. I don't know about and that. Uh... it's crazy. <laughs> quality man I, I, I can't go down that road but like but so i mean i've seen a woman i've seen female like i've seen female fans like wish cancer on people that they're pl- that the other team is playing against i hope you get cancer and die like i've seen that happen in college football games and it's nuts it's nuts you know but anyway what you were saying fan fan boys dc fan boys come out for to yeah they do them. that's why that's why like i'm unsurprised that it made a billion and also it wasn't as critically poor received as the previous so it drew in more casuals mm. on top of the guarantee of we're going to make four or five hundred million with our fan base pretty much guaranteed anyway yeah so by comparison to a lot of the other dc slate and i agree with the assessments on most of those dc movies i think they're unfortunately they're uh, pretty unwatchable to me yeah uh so yeah, that one was not surprising to me. Yeah. Although I, I would be shocked at any superhero making a movie making that much money, and it would be surprising to me. Yeah, fair enough. Um. So yeah, I don't know what kind of context, unless it was, because you know, Endgame is now the number one movie of all time as far as box office. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe I'd be shocked if like some new introductory piece, like when Captain Marvel came out and did over a billion and right. was wildly successful. If it overtook Titanic. No, oh, yeah. That would have been crazy to me. I um, bet there are some people listening to us who said like Titanic makes no sense to them how it made a billion dollars. And that was when you when tickets were like eight bucks or twelve bucks. So it's even more of an accomplishment. Yeah. That it made a billion dollars, I would say. Well, I mean, if we want to do that, the money that Gone with the Wind made during the Great Depression yeah, true. is crazy impressive. That's true. That's true. Unemployment at, you know, 20%. This fucker's churning right along. So uh, I was right. James Wan directed Furious 7. So the seventh installment was James Wan. So there you go. The clip of, was that him and Vin on set the day before he quit? No, that was Justin Lin. Oh, that's just, oh. that's right. Oh, and when Ben is like, do you think we got the best one ever? And the guy's like, yeah, I, you know, sure. I think, I think it's going to be good. And then Ben is like, ah, it was the weirdest fucking clip. It's the weirdest fucking clip. I love it. And then he left the project like the next day. The next day. <laughs> the literal next day. And you he left that the first week, man. That tells you how fucking difficult this asshole is to work with. Vin, there's no, and, and I know Brie Larson posting that pic. Like, what are you doing? Like, why are you being a part of this? Like, this guy's a jerk. This guy's a jerk. What did Brie say? I didn't see. 
she's signed on to be in Fast 10. Oh, wow. It's called a paycheck. I guess, but he posted a picture of them laughing together and, and goes, you see this woman and starts talking about it. I'm like, you're, you're attaching yourself to this thing. And he's like, a jerk off who drove off The Rock. He drove off um, Justin Lin, who directed, I thought was an, a good film last time. And then, you know, Tyrese is, is absolute, cr- absolutely crazy on those films and saying all kinds of nutty shit. So it just, I don't know, man. It just seems, it seems weird to me, you know. <clears throat> That's just my two cents. And there's going to be 10 of them. Yeah, Vin Diesel all... is the lead of one of the biggest fucking franchises in the world. Guys, uber rich, dude. From a bouncer to uber rich. What can you do? Yeah. Uh, he hasn't, right. hasn't done a good acting performance since Find Me Guilty. <laughs> That's true. That's very true. Yeah. Uh, all right. Well, thank you, Fred Castillo. Thank you to everybody who sent in questions, Charles and Nicholas. We appreciate it madly. Keep sending in your questions, thoughts, and comments because... Uh, we're getting down to single digits, so we don't want to go into single digits. So send in your questions, thoughts, and comments. Five dollar and above. That's how you get to uh, be a part of the Patreon and uh, uh, submit your questions, thoughts, and comments for us to talk about here on the show and get a little shine from us. So there you go, uh, Matt. What else do we have to tell? Uh, if you'd like, you can follow the show on Twitter at Top Ten Show. It's all spelled out. It's also on the screen above my head. Otherwise, you can go to Instagram and YouTube. It is forward slash the Top Ten Podcast with the number ten. So please hit us up over there. And you can follow me anywhere at Matt Nost. And you can follow me at The Roca Says. All right, y'all take care of yourselves. Be well and talk to you next time with another brand new episode of Topic Thunder. Thunder.